Hello viewers, in this video, I shall try to give you a little information or a little summary or an insight on a epic poem that is Metamorphosis written by Ovid. Okay, and uh, before moving on to the summary of this poem, uh, I would like to request you that please read the text line by line, okay, word by word, then only things will be clear for you or things will be clear to you. Otherwise, my video is nothing but a tip of the iceberg. Okay, I hope you will keep that thing in your mind. That's it. So now let's begin our discussion. The Metamorphosis, it is an ancient Greek narrative poem composed by Roman poet Publius Ovidius Naso. He was born on 20 March 43 BC and died around 1718 AD. Okay, and uh, the this work, the Metamorphosis, it was written around 8 AD, and it is one of the remarkable works in Latin literature. Okay, Latin uh, language is now no more uh, in a uh, no more widely spoken, but uh, there are some uh, uh, places where this is used right now too, but in a modern form. And Metamorphosis, it consists 11,995 lines, including 15 books and over 250 myths. Okay. And uh, through this poem, the poet has chronicled the history of the world from its creation to the defecation of Roman general and statesman Julius Caesar. Besides, the poet has begun the poem by invoking the gods. Okay, uh, and he asked them to inspire his work, which opened with the creation of the world and continued on the present day and was about the metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means transformation okay? or change okay? or transfer of bodies. That is called metamorphosis. The literal meaning of metamorphosis is transformation means to, to take another form or to change. Okay, uh, that is transformation or metamorphosis. And aftermath, the poet has also uh, limbed the birth of the world. And at the beginning of the realm, realm means this world, a creator separated earth from heaven, sea from land, and lighter air from heavier air. Okay. Gradually, the creator had made beings to inhibit to inhabit these new spaces. For instance, gods and stars fill the heavens, fees. Uh, the seas, bees, the land, and birds, the air. Like that, in every element of the nature, all beings are uh, inhabiting. Eventually, human beings were created to rule the earth. Okay? On the other hand, four ages followed after that. Number one is called the age of gold, uh, and it was a time of trust, moral supremacy, and goodness. And the second was the age of silver, which was a time when people had to work for a living. Okay. Then there is number three, the age of bronze, which was a time of first war. Okay. Human uh, being had seen the war for the first time. And, uh, but uh, some semblance of morality, still, uh, of morality still persisted at that time too. And number four was the age of iron, which was a time of impious barbarity and bloodshed. Subsequently, the gods appeared and uh, witnessed human impity in the Iron Age. Specifically, if you talk then Jupiter, Jupiter had visited the house of Lacon, but Lacon treated Jupiter with greatest disrespect. Even Lacon left no stone unturned to murder him uh, or to murder Jupiter in his sleep. So, when this thing occurred, then uh, Jupiter utterly frustrated and outraged. Jupiter is also known as Jove. So he made up his mind to punish humanity with a mammoth flood or gigantic flood. So owing to their pity, some people like only uh, Deucalion and Pyra, they survived this uh, wrath of God in the form of flood. And afterwards, Themis, Themis gave Deucalion and Pyra advice how to repopulate the earth after this devastating art uh, and consequently the couple repopulated the art by obeying the commands of the gods and throwing rock behind them at last eventually these rocks transform into a new and hearty breed of human being okay. so that's it uh, it was a, an introduction or a little bit background information about this epic poem metamorphosis written by obit but in this video, my discussion will not be on the entire book written by uh, 15 book, right? 15 books written by 
of it. Rather, I will here specifically uh, focus on number uh, six or the book six of uh, Metamorphosis. Okay. Okay. So in the book six of the uh, epic poem Metamorphosis, Ovid, the poet has portrayed the muse's story that reminded Minerva. Actually, Minerva was the Roman goddess of wisdom, justice, law, victory, and the sponsor of arts, trade, and strategy. And Minerva is one of the three Roman deities in the uh, Capitoline tribe along with Jupiter and Juno. Okay. So uh, Minerva, uh, uh, she was... Uh, Roman goddess of wisdom, justice, law, victory, this I have already told you. So, uh, the writer, Ovid, has re reminded Minerva's uh, challenge to the, uh, means how she was challenged by a mortal human beings. Okay. So, uh, of another challenge to, to the gods after the creation of the universe. And actually, uh, a mortal girl named uh, Arachne, uh, my pronunciation will not be up to the standard uh, since this this kind of words is not our everyday practice so please verify it so a model girl named arachne she boasted that she could beat minerva in a weaving contest and upon witnessing it minerva uh, in disguise she warned the girl but she was inflexible and obdurate furthermore arachne su suggested that a contest between herself and minerva it must be held to prove who who is best so here uh, we can also point out that uh, through this work, the writer has also tried to delineate how uh, the war or the conflict between uh, mortal and immortal or the uh, fight between God and uh, human being, uh, this, this has been um, going on since time immemorial or since the creation of the art. Furthermore, uh, this I have told you that Arachne suggested a contest between herself and Minerva. Even Minerva has disguised herself as an old woman and told Arachne to pay tribute to Minerva as no one can compete with goddess. Okay, so uh, but though we know that we cannot compete with God or we cannot compete with goddess, but there is a human tendency to prove that we are superior or we are prodigious. We, we can do what we want or we are the superior... Uh, being in many aspects in this art like that so uh, that tendency might have uh, acted arachne to to challenge the minerva to, uh, for this contest of weaving ironically arachna ignored and discarded the woman's advice means uh, minerva's advice in the form of the woman and told her that she was too old to give advice then helpless Minerva reveal her identity, but it had to no impact on Arachne. Finally, Minerva and Arachne set up their looms and they began expertly weaving beautiful uh, multi-colored wool. And in the meantime, Minerva wove, uh, wove a tapestry that depicted the gods wielding their particular powers. And uh, she had also uh, limbed herself in in the center by producing olive trees while the gods watched and diametrically impressed. Moreover, she had also portrayed the two mountains that represent two mortals who once aspired to be Jupiter and Juno in two corners of the tapestry. Then she has represented two women who competed with Juno turning into birds in the other two corners. However, Arachne uh, wove, uh, wove a tapestry that, that depicted Jupiter kidnapping Europa in the disguise of a bull as well as many other women whom Jupiter kidnapped and raped by discussing her himself to trick them. So here uh, this girl, this model girl Arachne has also tried to depict the flaws of the god, gods and goddesses that uh, actually they have to done very um, uh, countless immoral things. So that thing she has tried to depict. But despite that, uh, she, will not be, uh, uh, she, she will not be the victor as gods and goddesses, they have the power, uh, they have the immense power. But still she had done that audacious task. So, as a matter of fact, Arachne also expounded that uh, expounded Neptune's deceptions and affairs and displayed Apollo and Bacchus uh, disguising themselves to overpower women. So, here we can, uh, in, through this work, we can also see that since time immemorial, women are the victim of uh, male dominancy, whether it is in the time of uh, mythical time of Roman Empire or mythical time or ancient time where women are always the subject of 
domination, exploitation, and affliction. So, as a result, Arachne was appreciated and the goddess of envy failed to criticize Arachne's skillful tapestry. Later, Minerva became furious at her rival success and ripped up uh, Arachne's tapestry. Okay. Then, Minerva fast, uh, fastened a halter around uh, Arachne's neck and sus suspended her in the air. At last, Minerva decided to spare uh, Arachne's life, but she turned her into a spider, uh, forced to weave webs for the rest of her life. Okay, so uh, as Minerva could not compete against mortal girl Arachne, so now as she is the goddess, she has that uh, countless power. So now she has uh, turned this mortal girl into a spider so that she, uh, she um, forced to weave webs for the rest of her life. So this is also a human being's con conflict with gods and goddesses. Uh, okay, I means some sometimes human beings are more superior in some arts in some some things. But despite that, gods and goddesses will always try to subjugate, dominate, and er eradicate their um, supremacy. So that thing we we have seen here. This thing you can add in your answers or when you will discuss this thing in your group discussion or in seminar or whatever where it is required or where it is essential. Okay, so the nevertheless. Uh, Niobe. Niobe is a childhood friend of uh, Arachne. Uh, she did not learn from her fate. Niobe was the wife of Amphion and Queen of Thebes, and she was proud of many things, including her offspring, uh, means ch children. And one day, M Manto or the M Mando, Mando, uh, Tiresias' daughter, asked the women of Thebes uh, to make sacrifices to Latona and her children, Diana and Apollo. Then Niobe was not uh, ready to agree at at any cost there therefore she walked through the streets describing her divine lineage and declaring that she was more fit for worship than Le Letona who wandered the art because no one would give her a piece of land on which to bear her sacred children so uh, here too we, we will see another uh, conflict between human beings and gods and goddesses okay uh, though Arachne uh, had succumbed to that due to her that uh, nuisance but despite that her own friend Niobe, she was to now challenging the goddess that I can do this better like that. Then what will have happen? Let's see. So uh, she walked through the streets uh, describing her divine lineage and declaring that she was more fit for worship than Latona who, wa who wandered the earth because no one would give her a piece of land on which uh, to bear her sacred children. Besides, uh, Niobe especially emphasized how many more children she had uh, She had than Latona, 14 to her only two. So consequently, Latona sought justice for this hubris and the gods agreed. Meanwhile, Apollo uh, had killed Niobe's seven sons with arrows and Niobe was informed both of their deaths and that of her husband Amphion who killed himself in sorrow. Interestingly, Niobe taunted Latona further by saying that she was happier in her sorrow than Latona ever was in her joy. Simultaneously, more arrows killed six of her daughters, leaving only Niobe's youngest, but he, he was too killed in time. Eventually, Niobe's body turned to stone in her infinite agony and grief and carried to the country of her birth where tears still flow from her marble eyes. So that kind of tragedy um, occurred due to this conflict between human beings and gods or gods and goddesses. So, uh, if we talk about uh, other thing, uh, then uh, after the after her death, after the death of Niobe, the countrymen they mourn the loss of their king and his children, and, and they downright they blame Niobe, whose brother alone mourned her death. Then subsequently, kings from throughout the world came to pay their respects, and in the morning assembly, mourning uh, means uh, when you uh, paying respect to to the uh, dead one. So that is mourning. Okay, mourning assembly. Only Athens king was absent at that time because he was caught up in a war with barbarians. So in the war, Tereus of Thers, uh, he had led the defense of Athens, and Pendian king of Athens, he gave him his daughter. Procne in marriage, but their wedding was a ghastly affair as Juno, uh, Haman, and, and the Graces, they were absent. Though the Furies and the uh, Humanites, they were in attendance, uh, but nevertheless, the pair married and had children. After five years, Procne had asked her husband to bring her sister uh, called Philomela to visit them. Therefore, Terrace went to fetch uh, Philomela, but upon reaching there, upon reaching the home of uh, Philomela, uh, he uh, means Terrace had 
he was overwhelmed with lust or with sexual desire for Philomela. Afterwards, Teres convinced Philomela to come aboard with him under the pretense of uh, visiting uh, Procne. But uh, uh, instead of taking Procne to her sister, uh, Teres had taken Philomela to a uh, fortress in the woods where he imprisoned uh, and brutally raped her. After the heinous incident, in the fear of exposure, Terius, uh, he had cut off or cut out her uh, Philomela's tongue to keep her from talking. Later, Terus arrived home and told Procne that her sister was dead and she was no more and she utterly believed uh, Terus as uh, he was his, her husband. And uh, But with the passage of time, as you all know, nothing lasts forever. So, almost a year later, Philomela conceived a plan to reveal the atrocity inflicted upon her by Terrace. Consequently, she uh, wove the incident into a cloth by a tapestry and had it delivered to Procne. So, as soon as Procne received the tapestry, uh, which was sent by Philomela, as she was, Procne was overwhelmed with the inexplicable rage and planned to revenge. Furthermore, in the night festival of Bacchus, Procne dressed herself up as a rebeller and rescued her sister Philomela. Then, utterly de desperate uh, and burning in the fire of re revenge, despite her love for the son, Procne made up her mind to kill uh, her own son and feed uh, her own son to her own husband and son's father, Teres. While Teres uh, ate the meal, he called out for his son that, where is my son? like that then Procne revealed her act of killing son that uh, then Procne told him that she had killed him because uh, Teres had done uh, something terrible to some something hor horrible to uh, his uh, sorry to her sister on on sister so upon hearing it instantly Teres ca called on, on the furies and attempted to kill the women or the Procne, Procne. but before Teres could kill Procne she became nightingale and Philomela became a swallow, means bird. Eventually, Terus too became a bird. And when the father of Procne and Philomela, uh, Pendian, uh, when he heard this news that uh, this kind of thing occurred, then he died in tragedy. And soon thereafter, his kingdom passed down to uh, Erectius, who had four sons and four daughters. And among four daughters, two were epitome of beauty. And one of these, uh, Cephalus, made a happy marriage. And on the other hand, the other, Oritia, she cannot have her beloved Boreas because of his connection to Terus. Uh, but one day, Boreas realized that as the god of the uh, North Wind, he must seize his love without consent. So he uh, took Oritia and married her. At last, they had twin boys who grew wings like their father. So in the, this way, it ends. But it is just a tip of the iceberg, iceberg or drop of the ocean. That's why I'm saying, please read the original text line by line, word by word, sentence by sentence. Then only things will be clear. Otherwise, you will be confused and it will be futile. Thank you so much.